Hi, I'm Emily and welcome to Studio Vlogmas Day 10. Hello, welcome back to Studio Vlogmas. It's day 10. Day 10 already. I decided to do a Q&A video for this one. I hope that's all right with you. I feel like most of my videos, I'm running around, I'm packaging orders, but sometimes it's nice to just sit down and answer some of your questions. I haven't done a Q&A since, I think it was September, um, and a lot has happened since September. So I asked on Instagram for your questions slash assumptions, because a lot of people ask me for assumptions videos. I didn't really know what it was, so anyway. Some of you have left assumptions and some of you have left questions. So I think we just get into it. Okay, so thank you so much to everyone that left questions for me. I'm gonna try my best to answer as many as possible. So we'll get through them very quickly. So yeah, let's just get into it. First question is, what is your dream product you'd like to create? I would really love to make um, a t-shirt or pajamas. I've said it a few times to my patrons. I, I'm a t-shirt and jeans kind of person and I've done a few products now where I just think a t-shirt would have been so cool um, but it's a little bit complicated because it's not like a pin where you can buy a hundred of them and they sell. With clothing it's like oh there's so many sizes and you want to cater to everybody so how do you do it? Um, so I'm definitely going to look into it next year. Does your family give you side eye for having an online business versus only a physical one? Um, I don't get side eye. I just don't really talk about my business. <laughs> so like my mom and Matt and everybody like knows what I do and really understands it. I think because I worked in animation for so long, I think most of my family just assume that I still work on TV shows. I don't even know who knows about this office, to be honest. I just don't talk about it. Let me know if you're the same, if you kind of tell everybody what you're up to, or if you just keep it to yourself. Um, I like being quite mysterious about it. Um, but no, I don't get side eye at all. Everyone is very supportive. How did you get into illustration? So, I never planned on being an illustrator. I always wanted to work in the animation industry and I always loved designing characters, but I, honestly thought that I was going to be an animator or a modeler in 3D. So I went to college and did 3D animation. I went to university and did 3D animation. <laughs> I can't animate at all. But that's kind of the path I took. And then when I got my first job in an animation studio, um, there was kind of like, <laughs> I wasn't a great modeler. Um, so I think one day it was like, Emily, can you just draw this? I can't remember what it was, or can you paint this? Or, And I did it and I really enjoyed it. So um, I just then became the concept artist at that studio. And then from there, I've done character design and illustration kind of came out that way, but I definitely, didn't pick up like I didn't get a Wacom tablet until after university so it was definitely not the plan. <laughs> What's the process to get your product ideas to physical sale ready products? Um, so I don't draw as much as I want to so a lot of the times I draw knowing that it's going to go on a product. Um, now I some people must do it differently like I never think, right, okay, I need to design a bookmark today. That doesn't happen for me. I tend to draw, and then if I like the drawing, I think, what product could this work on? I suppose when it comes to pins and things, that's different. I kind of design the product. So let's take a pin, for example. I tend to sketch out ideas, um, and then once I have an idea, I get in touch with a manufacturer, um, there's sometimes some back and forth if the product isn't quite right um, or if it's not going to work um, and then pull the funds together and get it made but in terms of like bookmarks and badges and prints they usually come out of an illustration that I've already done and I think oh I like that I'm going to put it on a bookmark or a badge I hope that makes sense where did you get your glasses from? <laughs> I've worn these glasses for nearly two years now so i would really love some new ones um these are from iola iola it's a scottish company i've tried loads of places but i'll leave details of them below these are the somerville 
frame and I have them in tortoiseshell and grey. How did you develop such a unique style? Your work is amazing and I love you and your videos. Thank you so much. Um, my style has just developed over the years. It's still changing. Sometimes, I, it, I don't know. Where does your style come from? It's, you look at things you like, you draw. Um, I'm obviously influenced by Disney, I love Disney. But I've worked on some awesome projects that obviously then I've picked up styles as well. And you know, like a great example is, I worked on Nella the Princess Knight in 2018. And I went into that project, um, I was okay. I learned so much on that project about faces, how faces work, mouth shapes. I had to do a lot of lip syncing on that job. Um, so character lip syncs and eye blinks and things and doing expressions. I learned so, so much that I now apply to my drawings. So I think just experience working on projects, you kind of just pick up little things that you then put into your style. Do you ever plan to have a physical store for people to shop in person? That was actually the, the goal for me. Um, I always pictured having a little lilac shop with a big window and beautiful flowers outside because I remember a couple of years ago, I went on a trip to Wales and we went to this little village and it was so nice and we popped it into a little shop and it was like a stationary shop and it was like all these different artists in there. And I just remember saying to Matt, my partner, like, oh my God, I'd love to open a shop like this. I'd love to have my work in a shop and then like collect other people's stuff and have this beautiful shop. Um, I've kind of moved away from that now. I have a family because the problem for me with having a physical shop is, unless I only open it like two days a week, I would have to be there every day. And what's great with what I do now is I can pick and choose when to work. Um, so that was one downside to having a physical shop. The other one is, if I do, I don't want it to be a stationary shop. I really want to open a Christmas shop. <laughs> and I've said this for a while now. And a year round Christmas shop where you walk in, feels like Christmas, it smells like Christmas, it's Christmas music playing. And I just don't think there's a market for it because not everyone is like me and would have a Christmas tree up all year round. So yeah, I, I don't think a physical shop's gonna happen, um, but you never know. When Luke is at school, I might change my mind. How do you balance out which content goes into Patreon, Instagram, YouTube? Great question. I YouTube for me is my diary. It's where I document my week. And if I have any tips, I will put it on YouTube. So I don't really worry about that too much. Um, that's kind of its own thing. Instagram and Patreon is hard because I like to give a lot of behind the scenes content on Patreon. So my patrons see the first products, they see they can get involved with making products. They, uh, it's very much behind the scenes. So it's like, okay, well, if that's on Patreon, what do I put on Instagram? Because I also want people to see behind the scenes there as well. So it's constant battle of what to put where. I tend to put the same content on both, but Patreons get it first. They like see things straight away as it's happening while I'm making the products, while I'm coming up with the ideas. And then Instagram tends to get it sort of later on, maybe when the product's made. Would you ever bring back products that weren't as successful as you'd hoped? I have talked about this because um, last year, last Christmas, I did Christmas cards um, and they did not sell well at all. I can't remember how many I sold, I sold like eight packs of them or something like that. It's really not good. And I really doubted myself for weeks and weeks. I thought to myself, I'm rubbish, like I can't do this. Um, and I've said it recently that I think I've found my following now, like I've found my people and now's a good time. So if I'd have released those Christmas cards, exactly the same, same design this year, I think they would have done okay. Um, so that just goes to show that sometimes it's not necessarily you or the product, it's just, you know, have you got your following? Have you found your audience? Um, so I don't actually have any plans to bring anything back. I have a couple of prints that I did last year that, I think I might bring back, but I would update them because my style has, I think I've got better and things. So I wouldn't bring back a product uh, without updating it a little bit. I feel silly trying to film myself for Instagram. Any tips on how to make it feel less awkward? Practice, 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 practice. Um, the first few are gonna be awkward because it's a bit like, 
oh, who's listening? Do I sound silly talking to myself? The more you do it, the more comfortable you are. And the more you do it, you realize that if you just talk like you would talk to a friend, um, it's not that awkward. It's just an easy way to get information out to your followers is to just chat to them. And I know some people message me to say, like nobody's watching my stories, so what's the point? And I'm like, now's a good time to practice when nobody's watching, get really good at it. Um, and you'll see that more and more people are watching and interacting. Um, but yeah, it is awkward. It's just one of those things that's awkward to begin with, but it, you, as a viewer, when you're watching your favorite creators talk to the camera, do you feel awkward watching? I bet you don't. I bet you really enjoy seeing people chat. So think about that with your followers. They just wanna hear from you. How does your motherhood both hold you back and propel you forward in business? Great question. So it definitely has propelled me because by talking about being a mum and documenting it, I have reached a whole new audience of people that are like me and maybe have babies or want to have babies and um, I'm hoping that I can give advice and tips. So it's definitely propelled me. It's also given me um, a reason to do it. So before I tried to be freelance, I tried to work for myself in 2017 and really struggled. And I'm wondering if it's because I didn't have, I had all the time in the world so I was a bit lazy and I wonder if now that I have Luca and I have less time to work maybe I am a bit more like okay I've got a day to work go 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 get stuff done um so yeah but it has held me back because I can't work every day I can't put as many hours in as some other people are and sadly I like to compare myself <laughs> and think that I'm not doing enough but I wouldn't have it any other way I've got the perfect balance right now, I think, of having a little family and a business that's working, it's doing okay on just two or three days of me working a week. What tips do you have to getting content out when you have a five month old that needs your attention? I have been there, it is so hard. You know what, it's very, I found it easier when he was very small because he slept a lot and when he slept was my time to work when he was awake that was him and me time as they get older their naps are less frequent and it is very hard to keep that up so my advice for this is try and be a little bit prepared now i know this is really hard um, to plan when you have little ones but i remember on a sunday evening just sitting down with a pen and paper and just thinking about the week, thinking about maybe two things I wanted to get done that week. You know, don't fill your diary, just have two things you wanna get done and maybe plan out a post on Instagram for every day. Now, it's really easy to plan stuff on apps like Preview. Um, so you could plan your content for the week on a Sunday and maybe just upload that every day. You'll feel better because you're uploading, you're being present. Um, and you're not having to rush around every day thinking, oh God, what do I post on Instagram today? So it's definitely something I did. I planned out my content for the week and then just scheduled it out. What is your favorite part about what you do? My favorite part is having an idea, designing or drawing or creating that idea and putting it out there and selling it. I don't think that's, I, a year ago I'd have felt awkward saying that but I love that I now if I have an idea I can create it I can make it I can put it on Etsy today and I could hopefully make a couple of sales for it package it and send it and that feeling of people liking what you make is amazing I don't think that feeling will ever go away of jumping up and down when you get an order and because I've worked for other people for so many years it's been great, I've worked with some amazing people, but deciding what I want to do is the best feeling ever and I don't think you could ever convince me to go back to working for somebody else and I know that sounds really bad, but no amount of money, no project, no anything could take me away from doing this, I don't think, unless something drastically went wrong and I had no choice. But I know back in 2017 when I tried to do this and it didn't work out, a project came along and I was like, yep, yeah, I'm going back into a studio. So I definitely wasn't in this mindset um, because the project and the money of that job 
made me say, no, I'm not doing this anymore, I'm going back. And you couldn't do that to me now. No, no amount of money, no Disney project, no nothing, I don't think would pull me away from this. Would you ever illustrate a book someday? I actually have illustrated two books. Are they here? They might be at home. I have actually illustrated two books. I don't really talk about it. They're not children's books, they're adult books that I did the cover of and some little illustrations inside. Um, and it was fun. I don't know if I would do it again. Um, I don't have a desire to illustrate a children's book, but never say never. I don't know. Do you worry about how many likes you get on a post even if your sales are good that week? Now, no. Uh, that's the absolute honest truth. I don't really know what my post average likes are. Like some posts I do could get a thousand likes and it's just incredible. And then I could post something the next day and it get a hundred likes. Like it's just so up and down for me. I don't really judge. Yeah, I don't really judge my business on my likes anymore. Now I used to, definitely. I used to feel really deflated if a post didn't do very well. But as long as orders are coming in and I'm being productive, I'm posting things, I'm getting myself out there, I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, I try not to um, worry at all. Do you ever feel like your creations aren't good enough? If so, how do you overcome it? Uh, yeah, I feel it all the time. Um, I, many times I've made something and I felt really proud of it and then I've put it out in my shop and then thought, oh no, it's not very good, is it? And it's not that it's not very good, it's just sometimes I build something up in my head and then put it out there and then I think, oh, I could have done this better or I could have done that better. But it's one of those things. How do I overcome it? I try not to let it get to me. As long as I am working hard, researching what I want to make, as long as I'm not rushing to produce something, as long as time has gone into the design and why I want to make it, like I have, I've always said for something to be in my shop I have to be extremely passionate about it and love it, like I will never release something on a whim or um, there's always thought behind every single thing that I produce, but I have definitely felt like that recently. <laughs> what is your favorite takeaway and what do you order? Love it. So I love a pizza. I think if I was gonna order anything, it would be a pizza and probably like a meaty pizza, pepperoni or meat feast or, oh, I really want a pizza. Any tips on organic growth on Instagram? Um, so yeah. I do have lots of advice on this because this time last year I'd hit 2,000 followers and it's 11,000 now so I've never done a sponsored post on Instagram, um, anything like that or bought followers, I don't even know if you can do that but um, I have literally just grown organically and there's things that I've done so being myself, talking to the camera, just updating people and not just posting a picture and typing, you know, chatting on Instagram has really helped me this year. Um, working on my brand and like how I come across on Instagram, um, that has been a big thing that I've done this year and last year. So if you go onto my Instagram, you'll see, you can see from the first like nine pictures like what my brand is, the colours, the fonts, things like that and just keeping that throughout. Um, it does take a lot of planning, it can be a lot of work but it's helped me massively with my growth on Instagram. Being part of the community, sharing people, chatting to people, commenting, don't just go and expect people to like and comment on your stuff, you have to go out there and support other people, share people, talk about other people. Um, again, that's just gonna help you grow. What did you hate and hate most and love most at school? Um, I think about this all the time. I would, part of me would love to go back to high school and be the person that I am now. <laughs> because in school, I felt like I, I don't know, I enjoyed school, I had lovely friends, I kind of just mixed with everybody I think, I didn't really like stick to one group, I kind of just moved around a lot, but I was very scared of being myself at school, um, like I look back now 
and I really wanted to do music, art, drama, all of these things, like the thought of doing drama and doing shows and things, I would have loved to have done that and I just didn't because I was terrified what people would think of me for doing it. I did music at school and art, um, but I'm sure I came up with an excuse for why I picked music in my options. I really remember having an excuse like something else wasn't available and I had to choose music, but I really wanted to do music. I would go back and do more of the things I wanted to do. Um, in terms of what I hated most at school, um, I wasn't a fan of like the cliques and um, yeah, I just wasn't myself looking back, like I was just, like I was such a homebody, like I wanted to be at home and I didn't like staying out at people's houses and I just, um, I was very happy sat in my room watching a film and I felt like I had to like put on this act. Um, yeah, anyway, the thing I loved about school was music, art, the people, the teachers, I really enjoyed high school. Have I missed what charities you have decided to donate to in December? You haven't missed it, so if you don't know, my AdSense money, which is basically the money I get from YouTube, which isn't much, I think in November I've earned 250 pounds, something like that, I need to check. I'm gonna donate that to some charities. Um, that money hits my bank, I think, next week. So um, look out for a video next week where I chat about the charities that I've chosen um, and I'll have some links for them too. Do you think qualifications are essential to being an illustrator? Love your vlogs. Thank you very much. Um, I don't think qualifications are necessary to be an illustrator um, because I'm an illustrator and my degree is in animation. I learnt Photoshop and got a Wacom tablet after uni. So, and I've managed to get work as an illustrator. I think if you're not gonna get a qualification, and I'm assuming you mean like a degree, definitely doing online courses. I think, you know, there's some amazing online courses you can do um, that will be so much more beneficial for your money. When you go to an interview, it's your portfolio that they're gonna look at. So you could have all the qualifications in the world, but if your portfolio isn't amazing or doesn't blow them away, you're not gonna get the job. So yes, qualifications are good, but really, really, really focus on getting your portfolio up to scratch. How do you feel when you see people almost copy your work? Um, I don't know if that means you've seen somebody copy my work and you're asking my opinion on it. <laughs> it's happening more and more and it, it's, there's like a spectrum to it. So there'll be people that literally take my illustrations and post them and say that they did it. And that's quite easy to shut down because other people will be like, hey, that's not yours. There's then some people who kind of take your artwork, trace it a little bit, change the colors and change a few bits, but still you look at it and you know it's yours. So it's like, hmm. Yeah, so sometimes I've called people out on that. Then there's people that take the idea of what you've done, but put it in their style. That's harder to kind of manage and that's happening more and more. Um, you know, like my self-love portion last year was like my biggest design I did. And it's like, although that's not a unique idea because I didn't design, like I didn't come up with love portion, but what I did is like, I think quite unique so it's like oh, people are kind of taking that um, and then there's things like my stationery and stuff that yeah it's hard it's really hard and when I see it I feel all a bit uncomfortable inside because you just never want to upset anybody and 99% of the time in my case it's been really the person's been so apologetic and they've taken it down or they've changed it. Um, I've never really had any issues calling people out, um, but I know some people that have and it can be really messy. So I just think like, it, I'm all for getting inspiration, like, you know, make mood boards, look on Pinterest, get ideas, but you can't take people's stuff. Look, I understand completely. I've been accused of the other way around. Like, I've been accused of taking people's work. It's gut-wrenching, it's horrible because I never intended to do it and it was a complete coincidence. Um, but, you know, 
it happens so yeah how long did it take for you to start your shop and how long did it take for you to get your first order so my business emily harvey art has actually been running for a really long time i opened my etsy shop in 2014 so it's like six years ago and i probably got my first order back then now i think up until like the start of this year i had like 200 sales on etsy the majority of them were family portraits because that was my business um so now i've sold more in this past year on etsy like i think it's at like 900 sales now so like one year on etsy has been like seven times does that make sense so my first sale happened a long time ago but it has taken me a long time to build up to where i am now many many years how do you make time for your business when you first started and luca was only a baby it was hard like i said before lots of planning lots of yeah planning content for the week um i had a lot of help as well which you know was amazing so i tend to just be a mum in the day and then luca would go to his grandparents like a couple of nights a week um which would help me so like for three hours on an evening he would go there i would work i'd also work at the weekends um i have to say you have to just be determined with it and like it's so easy to just sit on the sofa and think oh, you know what i'm not going to work tonight i'm just going to watch some telly and i could have done that but i think if you put yourself in that mindset of no i am going to do an hour of work today i am tired but i have this goal and this you know this dream and if i do an hour of work tonight i'm an hour closer to that and that's definitely the mindset i was in and um that's what I did, I just worked. How do you stay on top of stock slash profits? Excel sheet, uh, physical planner app. Um, so this is one thing I'm not amazing at. And one thing that my mum is like, Emily, you need to get more on top of this. So next year, my mum is gonna be very big on like spreadsheets and stuff for my business. Now I have to say in terms of like calculating my profits and how I'm doing money wise, I do it through QuickBooks. So I have all my accounts on there. I know what's coming in, what's going out. And I know that I'm making a profit. The problem is I don't know right now, like the different areas of my business, what's doing better than others. And that's something I'm gonna focus on next year because like say for example, Patreon doing really well, um, but maybe these parts of my shop that I'm losing out on and you know, like things like that. So next year, ask me that question again next year and uh, hopefully I've got a better answer for you. So now I'm gonna move on to assumptions because there have been a couple of assumptions. So let's have a see. So this one is, you know where you want to get to in life, you just haven't figured out how yet. I suppose so. I don't really know where I want to get to in life um, because so much has changed in a year and I've got another what? 40 years of working so I can't really predict where I want to get to um, I would really like to have a shop that is doing well um, I would like to have a family that is happy and that I'm not in the office 24-7 um, in terms of not knowing how to get there that is definitely true I definitely feel like I'm winging it every single day and I think people think I've got it all figured out, but I really don't. <laughs> I just take every day as it comes and just hope for the best. I mean, that's maybe not the best way to go about business, but that's what I'm doing. Assumption, you're a Hufflepuff. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I do, I've done these, I've done this quiz a hundred times. Hang on, let me go on the Pottermore website and see what I am. Cause I have, me and my patrons did this. I am, I'm a Hufflepuff. Well done, you're right. I'm a Hufflepuff. That you are always positive. I try to be because I, I try not to be negative. There are times where I am negative and I'm a bit grumpy and I'm not nice to be around. It's normally a specific time of the month. Um, <laughs> but I think I'm a positive person. What I just think life's too short. Life is way too short. And we've seen that this year to be negative. Like just see the positive things in life because there's so many out there. Um, and it's just not worth being negative. You like to draw a lot as a child. Yeah, I think so. I've seen pictures of me drawing. Yeah, I think I've always just drawn. I've always drawn Disney characters and things like that. So those are the assumptions. I think, 
I've covered a lot of these questions. There's one question that I haven't answered and that is, what are your goals for 2021? So I've got a few, um, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hang fire with those because next week, one of the last, or even the week after, like one of the last Studio Vlogmas videos is going to be looking back at my 2020 goals because I definitely filmed them. So we're gonna watch that back and I'm gonna give you some 2021 goals. So watch out for that, that'll be a really good video. So thank you so much to everybody that asked me a question. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any more questions, head on over to our Patreon because I'm on there answering all your questions. We have a lovely Discord server full of people giving advice and chatting to each other and you can find me there. I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye guys.